Hello. I am NXT34927, biomechanical being and assistant to the Ed effects. Thank you for accessing archival material item number 2247392183T71 9. My purpose here is simple. I am to show you the real-time global illumination system employed in the game, Dungeon Forge. As these laughably crude slides obviously made by a highly bothered software engineer, with quote, way better things to do right now, demonstrate in the virtual world of video games, light doesn't behave exactly as it would in reality. In the real world, light will bounce off of a surface and some, will bounce directly to your eye. This is a phenomenon known as direct illumination. However, most of the light bouncing off of a surface will proceed to bounce around an environment many many times before hitting your eye, illuminating and coloring each surface it touches as it goes. This is what's known as, indirect illumination. The two basic phenomena previously described, together constitute, albeit in a very boiled down manner, what is known as global illumination. However, in the virtual world of video games, where memory concerns and processing power unfortunately dictate much of what is possible, things don't exactly work that way. Dynamic lighting and shadowing was a major milestone in getting light in games to work similarly to the way it does in real life. It allowed lights to move around a scene, and dynamic elements, such as moving or destructible objects, to be illuminated even as they moved around, and perform their functions within a scene. However, due to technological limitations, dynamic lights have always had a major drawback. They only account for the single bounce of light off of the initial surface, and into the camera. Any simulation of light bounces from a dynamic light source in most game engines has historically been completely neglected. Here, we see a scene so lit. All of the light sources in this scene are dynamic, and thus only direct illumination is simulated. The result is that anything that the light doesn't directly touch remains completely invisible and the scene looks strange and uneven. Simulating each ray of light in real time would be a task that current technology is simply not fully up to. Here we see a scene lit with a few techniques used in order to fake global illumination in a non-real time manner. The drabness of the scene reflects its lack of dynamism. We fake global illumination with such techniques as turning up ambient light in a scene, using emissive shaders to allow surfaces to produce their own light and we bake light maps that pre-calculate the path of light rays throughout a scene. Finally, here is the same scene, lit only by dynamic lights powered by a technique called voxel cone tracing. This technique simulates light bounces in a sparser way than the traditional ray tracing techniques used in film, allowing it to produce an accurate simulation of light bounces and color bleed, without breaking the performance bank. This particular shot contrasts the results of direct illumination and real-time global illumination. Notice the realistic color bleed from light reflecting off the green surface of the crystals onto the environment, as well as onto dynamic parts of the scene such as characters. These sequences serve to demonstrate the difference that quality real-time global illumination can make, in terms of the graphical quality of a game. Effect Masters thank you for viewing this archival material on what made Dungeon Forge such a splendid creation all those eons ago. 
They hope you've enjoyed this look into the particular window within the space-time continuum during which Dungeon Forge was still under development by the Collective Dream Studios, and that you were one of the many whose contributions made the game such a tremendous success in its timeline.